Good evening and thanks for joining us. Oklahoma's governor summed up what people in Moore are facing tonight. She said the streets are just gone, not for blocks, but for miles. The tornado was a top of the scale EF5. They don't get any bigger. Rescue teams are still digging through the splintered buildings. Those who survived are recovering what they can. Others, like this man, are just sitting in stunned silence where their homes used to be. The medical examiner says 24 people are known to have died, including children, and that number could rise in what President Obama said today is one of the most powerful tornadoes in history. Our Robin Stickley is in Moore, Oklahoma, tonight. Robin? You know, Donna, it is really hard to believe given the overwhelming devastation that is all around them. But residents and more say their spirit is still standing and that they will recover again together. The twister demonstrated its muscle when it sheared off the roof of this school. In an instant, a child's normally safe haven was torn apart. Oh my God. I had to hold on to the wall to keep myself safe because. I didn't want to fly away in the tornado. All the desks were on top of us, and the teacher got stuck. And so somebody had to help her because the desk was on her leg. One teacher stood out as the tornado's hero for protecting her students the best she could. I was on top of six kids. On top of six children? Uh -huh, I was lying on top of them. And they're all OK? All mine are OK. Other students didn't make it. They went to the basement for shelter and ended up drowning. And, uh, this is nothing like I've ever seen before. The teachers were left to comfort the survivors until their parents could get there. And then I came out and I saw the cars and I saw the houses and I just started crying so hard. All right, hon, you are never ever going to go through this again. Eyewitness video shows how Oklahomans came face to face with this powerful force. Oh my God! The massive tornado packed winds pushing 320 kilometers an hour, cutting a path clear across central Oklahoma. When you see a tornado that big, you find a place is, you, know, you have no choice. It's either find cover or die. Honestly, I was like, I'm not going to see tomorrow. I I was just like. I don't want to die today. Head back towards where we were standing and spread out every about 10 or 15 meters. All night, soldiers dug through the twisted, tangled mess, hoping to find more survivors. I'm not going to give up hope. You know, if there are some people that aren't accounted for, I'm going to keep hope, keep prayer for those people to be recovered. Today, residents return to the ruins of their homes. I was able to find pictures, which everything else is pointless. Nothing was blowing, no wind. It was just really cool and calm. That's when I realized I knew I was right in the middle of it. So I went back in, covered up, covered up the family. And that's when I heard everything hit. But we survived it. And for this woman, she thought all hope was lost for her puppy. Hi, puppy. The dog. Oh, help me. And then her lost dog reappeared. Oh, oh, well, I thought God just answered one prayer to let me be okay. He answered both of them. Now, in terms of violent weather, this is not over yet. In fact, we saw serious thunderstorms here this afternoon that understandably put everybody on edge. But there are predictions for severe weather tonight, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and still Oklahoma. So the risk still exists, Donna. Still not a safe place. And Robin, this tornado topped the scale in terms of power. And the, the only way to survive, people say, uh, was to be underground. Do most people there, though, have underground storm shelters? You know, Donna, this is interesting. I talked to a gentleman today who said this is tornado number eight for him. So, yeah, you would think that everybody here would have that kind of shelter room. Here's the issue. The city and the feds have a battle going back and forth. The city says that FEMA has made regulations so strict that people here can't get their money on their hands, rather, on grant money that would allow them to build those kinds of shelters. And arguably, you know, those shelters would be life saving. So I certainly think we're going to hear more about that debate. All right. Robin Stickley in... Uh... 
Oklahoma tonight. Thank you so much. When an EF5 tornado hits, it is like nothing else on Earth. It's as big as they get, with gusts of winds of more than 320 kilometers per hour. An EF5 can raise homes right to the foundation. It can throw cars the length of a football field. And that's exactly what happened in Moore yesterday. That tornado cut a swath of destruction 27 kilometers long and 2 kilometers wide. As Eric Sorensen reports, they are sadly familiar with tornadoes in Oklahoma. And yesterday, conditions were perfect for one of the worst. You can see the tornado's path of destruction, a familiar slash across the American plains this time of year. We're in the path now. Where do we go? South? South. south. Just go south. Yeah, go Too south. Too familiar for this community. Keep going. We're okay. We're pulling away from it, and we're doing fine. Moore, Oklahoma has been slammed by four tornadoes in the last 15 years. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here comes the ground. This one among the country's worst. 200 mile an hour wind speeds over a two mile swath that was on the ground for about 20 miles made it one of the most damaging tornadoes that the U.S. has ever seen. Absolutely terrible. Multiple deadly storms, an unlucky distinction for Moore, but not a surprise in Tornado Alley. Of all the world's tornado zones, the United States is ground zero, up to 1,200 a year. Canada has the second largest number, about 100 tornadoes annually. All other countries have fewer than 100 each. Why is this the region on Earth for these perfect storms? When conditions align, the Rocky Mountains impede moderate weather from the west, allowing cold Canadian air from the north and warm, humid air from the Gulf of Mexico to speed across the great flat plains where they collide in America's midsection. They do happen more often here than in any other place on Earth. And the experts, though, can't quite explain this community's streak of bad luck. There are a few instances in the literature of towns being hit uh, frequently uh, in succession like this. Uh, I don't know that this, though, is uh, something that I have seen anywhere. We have some cooler air moving in from the north. Those same conditions ripe for more tornadoes today. As shocking as the devastation is, it's such a part of life here that people almost immediately got to work. It's just a house, so, it, you know, it's, we're safe and that's what matters. Starting over in Tornado Alley, where the world's worst storms aren't a question of if, but when and where. No, 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 this is not good. Eric Sorensen, Global News, Washington. And they are still tallying the damage there in Oklahoma, but it's likely to be one of the worst. The most costly tornado in the U.S. history was in 2011 in Joplin, Missouri. It caused about $2.8 billion in damage and killed 162 people. The deadliest tornado was back in 1925. It slammed into three states, Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, killing 747 people.